So in the screencast, we're going to talk about the human skeleton development, the formation of bone tissue, um, and three processes that are really quite related. That being the formation and the development of the skeleton from um, a growing embryo in through an infant and a growing child, to what happens when there is a break in, or an injury to the skeleton and the healing process that forms bone tissue, and three, the constant process of remodeling. Remodeling is the process of the, of the constant give and take of bone tissue throughout one's lifetime. So we'll talk about those three. In the beginning, in an embryo or a, or a fetus, the, the skeleton is primarily cartilage. It, it really looks like what you would imagine a fetal skeleton to look like. It has the typical skeleton form for the most part, but it's not what I call bony bone. And through development, and mostly, mostly by the time a human baby is actually born, most of the cartilage has been replaced by what I call bony bone, although some areas of, of isolated cartilage remain. So if you remember from the structure of bone tissue, you remember that the epiphyseal plates, or in other words, simply put, the growth plates, uh, they allow for the lengthwise growth of long bones. In other words, they, al they allow for growing taller and arms growing longer. Um, new cartilage, new cartilage cells are continuously formed at that epiphyseal plate, and the older cartilage actually become ossified, which means they become bony bone. So ossification is this process, and the steps are that the cartilage is broken down. It's basically... Um, degraded, almost almost kind of liquefied in a sense. Um, you can imagine it that way. And the, the enclosed cartilage that is enclosed by bony bone is digested away. And that opening becomes the medullary cavity in a long, in a long bone. So really, the process of ossification is where the bony bone, the calcified, mineralized, mature bone tissue replaces cartilage tissue through this entire process. So continuing on with ossification or bone growth, um, bone growth or the growing of the skeleton continues until, of course, it, for some reason it stops. Now, there may be a lot of contributing factors. Probably the number one thing is however the complex uh, genetic makeup of the individual works. But, of course, also there's, there's nutritional aspects to, to bone growth. Um, but the bones are remodeled continuously throughout, the, throughout one's life, and there's two main factors. Um, blood calcium levels, we'll talk about this a little bit more a little bit later, but there's also the pull of gravity. Um, there's the stresses that the body, that the skeleton responds to. Um, in short, the, the more stress put on a bone, it's going to react. It's actually going to grow more dense and more and respond to the stresses that a human puts on it. Um, they have a lot of examples where you know baseball players, softball players, tennis players. I mean, their dominant arm that they use quite a bit um, actually grows more dense, grows more massive because of the constant stresses that your body reacts to. Um, the opposite of that are issues of long-term states of 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 zero gravity. Um, astronauts, they have to deal with, with um, a little bit of loss of bone mass due to not having that pull of gravity or stress on, on the skeleton. So in this diagram, this just takes a look at three kind of freeze frame shots of through development from embryo to fetus to, to a child showing bone growth and showing the kind of a time lapse. We'll take each one individually. So in an embryo, or a very, very young and early fetus, uh, the bone tissue, the bony bone, the calcified deposits uh, laid down by the osteoblasts, really start growing in the middle portion of the, of the bone, and then as well as on the, the outside. Remember that it's an original skeleton is of hyaline cartilage. As this continues on, you have some new centers of bone growth, secondary bone growth centers um, that happen in the, epi um, the epiphyses regions. And 
Still, right about here is where you will find the typical growth plates or the epiphyseal plates and the bone growth will continue in both directions. So as you can see this looks more and more like a typical long bone in a human being but you have a couple different areas of growth that are taking place here. Uh, you will have cartilage cells that are followed up by bone cells and you get a growth you get growth overall in that direction. The same thing happens at the epiphyseal plates. You have new cartilage growing here and behind it, coming in behind it, is new bone formation. And again, the overall, kind of the net process going in both directions of a long bone, you're going to get a lengthening of a, lengthening of a bone and Essentially, simply put, individual grows taller, their arms grow longer, legs grow longer, etc. So here we're just comparing two processes, bone growth and bone remodeling, and seeing how they're similar. Um, but sticking with the process of the bone growth, you can see what I was talking about where at this end of a, of a long bone, you're going to have continual articular cartilage, or remember the hyaline cartilage that is growing at the ends, and it's being followed up by the bone tissue almost from underneath. Uh, a lot like the process of skin growth where we talked about the different layers of the epidermis and how your skin can kind of be thought about as growing from the inside out. The same holds true for in, base, in, in general for bone tissue. And again here at the epiphyseal plate, you'll have cartilage growth. And then behind it, you'll have the bone growth. And again, you get an overall lengthening of the bone. Bone remodeling, the actual process of the, the chemistry and what the cells are doing is pretty much the same. It just happens for mostly for, for different reasons. And this is just basically bone reshaping. Bone reshaping as you age, as an individual gets older throughout their life. Probably every 10, 12 years or so, all of your bone tissue is actually exchanged and remodeled. It doesn't happen like a snake molts its skin, but it happens slowly over time. So bone tissue gets broken down by cells called osteoclasts, and, and it gets built back up in cells called osteoblasts. But you'll shave off a little where it's unneeded and built up where the bone tissue is needed. The three bone cells that we need to be concerned with the types. Remember that osteo means bone, refers to bone tissue. Site means cell, and these are the typical bone cells that you've learned about in the lacuna of the of the bone tissue itself, um, housed in the little cavities within the bone tissue. Now, osteoblasts and osteoclasts. These are the two cells that are involved in building up of bone tissue and breaking down of bone tissue. And both of them act throughout one's lifetime in a normal fashion. Now the osteoblasts actually build the bone tissue. So almost like a, almost like a street gets paved, osteoblasts essentially lay down new bone tissue. Osteoclasts, on the other hand, are like, the, are like road reclaimers, the type that break up the asphalt or the concrete and tear it down into into small chunks that are carried away. Well, osteoclasts um, almost liquefy the bone matrix itself. And they are put into action a lot of different reasons, because of response to hormones, because of response to the stresses put on the body. But the osteoblasts build the cells and the cl clasts break down the tissue. One quick thing that I remember, I try to keep this in mind, I try to keep the word straight. I think of the osteoblasts, B with a blast. Blasts are the bone builders. Blasts, bone builders, to keep them straight. So on to bone fractures. Um, fracture is obviously a break in the bone, and there's a lot of different types of fractures depending on how they're caused and, and what the actual uh, break in the bone is. But we don't need to know all of those things. The traditional names for for closed and open are simple fractures or compound fractures, um, and that's as far as we need to know with them. We don't need to get into the specifics of the different types. We just want to know how they heal. In keeping it simple, 
there's four main steps that we need to know um, for bone healing and repair of bone fractures. And we'll take a look at a slide with a, with a picture of this happening. But first step is a hematoma. Then I have what is a, called the cartilage callus. And then we've got a bony callus. And the fourth step is the remodeling at the, at the break point. So these four steps really keep it pretty simple, but the hematoma is just the, is just the swelling. It occurs almost immediately. Um, remember that bone tissue is very alive and it's very well nourished with or supplied with blood. And so when you break a bone, you are going to break arteries and there's gonna, you're going to have an internal bleeding. You're going to have a hematoma. But that's good for a lot of reasons because um, a lot of the... A lot of, um, there's a, an immune response. There's a lot of cells that flood to the area to, to get the healing process started right away. The second thing is it's basically patched over with a fibrocartilage callus, which is just a framework, almost the body's immediate natural splint that goes to work on patching and, and bridging the gap between a broken two uh, sides of a broken bone. The, um, the bony bone... So the actual bone matrix, the hard calcified and mineral matrix, in the same process of bone formation in development and remodeling occurs here with a break, and the bony bone replaces the, the fibrocartilage um, mesh or splint that originally formed. And you're going to have all sorts of new connections with the blood vessels as well. And then at the end, you are always left with basically an, an extra amount of tissue. The human body is an amazing thing, and it almost always goes way overboard in its healing. And so you're left with some extra bone tissues, some bumps basically, that need to be leveled out. They need to be shaved off. The osteoclasts will come in and do that and try to make it as normal or return to normal as possible. And sometimes, especially as one grows older, um, the healing process, the healing, all the healing processes of the body are less efficient as one gets older. And sometimes you're left with a little bump, a bony callus, where you did have a fracture. But these are the simple st four steps, pretty simplified, but we need to know the basic step A, B, C, D as we talked about it here.